This is a demonstration of using PBI as a general purpose mashup and syndication integration server. The idea here is to provide a single assembly line, which will be our service control. This one will be binding to some port and listening for incoming RSS or HTTP or whatever the protocol is for these requests. Then it will provide uh, connectors or logic to delegate these calls to the under or to the service assembly line on the right hand side that's designed to deal with that feed. In this specific example, I've created actually four different service assembly lines. There is a basic default one, which just simply responds that the server is alive. Then we have a people assembly line, which will be reading some rows from the database, joining more information from the University of Buffalo's telephone directory, and filtering out any invalid mail addresses. In addition, we have a mail assembly line, which then will do a lookup into an LDAP directory and return those entries which fit the mail filter that's passed in. And finally, we have a changes assembly line, which will publish changes to a Domino server as an RSS feed. This demo solution includes two assembly lines that are running at the outset. One of them is my RSS feed dispatcher. This one will be then listening for incoming RSS, RSS feed requests. And based on parameters sent there, we'll dispatch this to one of these other assembly lines here to actually provide the RSS data. There's additionally a people details assembly line, which provides an HTTP lookup service, which we'll see in use in just a moment. Let's switch to Yahoo Pipes, bring up my pipes, and here I've pre prepared one called TDI Driven RSS Feeds. And we'll just run this. Now this provides me with a couple of input fields. The first one is for entering the actual name of the feed, which will then correspond to the assembly line that will retrieve the information for the feed. And then for one of these, it will, there's also an additional input parameter for setting a search filter. But if I just say run pipe without any AL to specify, it will then use the default line. And that returns a message saying, telling me that the service is up and running, and also giving me a, a usage line. So let's try out the people feed. This assembly line, which is going to be called, reads the first 15, 16, 17 rows out of a database. It then performs joins from an LDAP directory and then pr provides this information as the RSS feed. Now you can see I've also put loaded a link for each one of these that uh, calls my lookup service, my HTTP lookup service, to find details on this person and then provide a simple web page with some information. We can then test the mail feed. In this case, I also enter the, the beginning or, or the search filter I want to use for mail. And we can say, let's start with everybody who has a mail that starts with an A, J, O, S, E. This time, it's performing an LDAP search, an LDAP directory, and returning those entries that match our filter. Now let's look at the changes feed. The changes feed uh, service assembly line starts off by checking Domino to see if any changes have happened since the last time we checked. And there are no changes right now, so let's bring up the Domino administrator and make a couple. And then make another change up here. Shorten up just to the one. Now going back to our pipe, if we run this again, it should be able to detect these two changes. And now, several months later, when I finally get a chance to complete this video, uh, I've made some changes to the RSS feed server config that you'll be able to download. All of these feeds now are runnable out of the box for you. There is one here that actually lists some information from a public LDAP server. Then there is the feed server assembly line itself. If you want to start up this service, you want this RSS service to go, you have to just start this assembly line and start it up using the standard run to completion mode. Then there is the default listing of all feeds available. So this feeds assembly line 
uh, a scripted connector that actually looks at the config of the running server, returns the list of assembly lines then, and then creates an RSS return on that. There is a file lists assembly line, which is another scripted connector, scans any directory that you want, plus optionally subdirectories. It then returns the list of all those files uh, sorted by some value, for example, sorted with the most recently changed first. Take a look at the source code, you see how you can set that up. Then there is a levels feed assembly line. This is also scripted connectors and scripted parsing, where I do some screen scraping, or rather some web page scraping of sites here in Norway. And the result is I can return the current water level of the major rivers here. So once we've got this running and we can see that it's listening on port 80, I can then open up a browser window and we can go to HTTP colon slash slash local host. And we get the default feed, which is just the list of assembly lines. We can in, uh, also see TDI working down here. We take a look at levels. And we'll see TDI now scraping some of those pages and returning some uh, water levels. We can additionally then add parameters like page size equals three and page equals, let's look at the fifth page or the fourth page. And right now I'm returning a lot more. So once we dial up this URL, TDI now, TDI now returns with just those three and it'll be the fourth page of, uh, of three water levels. Same thing with file list. Uh, file list uh, as a hard stop at 15. I did that simply by configuring the assembly line to limit the amount of data that the scripted iterator connector is going to return. So these are just the first 15 files off of my root directory. And I hope this has been a good example for you. I'm glad to finally finish the video and please keep coming back for more information on TDI.